to the October 25th, 2022 Gildan Central School District Board of Education meeting. Would you all please silence your cell phones and stand for the pledge? I pledge, I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, first on the agenda, actually before public, do we need to vote for the video conferencing? Um, Just remember that. Yes, before we do any action, there is an item toward the bottom for okay. the video conferencing. Just remembered. So if we scroll down to uh, board president action letter A, uh, policy for video conferencing of board meetings. Can I have a motion to approve the, or motion to, to accept the policy adoption for video conferencing of board meetings? Blanca, second Nate. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes eight zero. And so we have Rebecca joining us? Yes, and, and okay. Rebecca would have abstained. Okay, and so passes 8-0 and one abstention. Thank you. So next on the agenda, we have the um, public input for 23-24 budget development, and we also have public comment. So first for public comment, I will just remind um, speakers that although the Board of Ed welcomes comments about programs offered by the district and other aspects of the district's operation, the board expressly prohibits public comment that would infringe upon a person's particular, or sorry, particular person's or student's privacy rights would be disruptive of the board meeting or create some safety issue. For example, those types of speech which are not protected by federal or state freedom of speech rights. Persons who desire to speak to the board about specific issues relating to employees or other confidential matters should request an executive session in a letter to the board president briefly outlining the issue to be discussed. Granting such requests will be at the discretion of the Board of Ed. So first we have signed up for public comment is Arij Naina. Naina? And you can just come to the uh, mic. Thanks. Hi, I'm Marie Chenena, and I'm the president of Muslim Student Alliance. One of the main objectives for our clubs this year has been to get Eid recognized as a school holiday. Eid al-Fitr is one of the two holidays celebrated by Muslims all around the world, and it falls on the day after the month of Ramadan, where we fast from sunrise to sunset and we celebrate it with family and friends. The district strives to promote diversity and inclusion within the community. With the growing population of Muslim students, um, recognizing Eid as a school holiday for the school year of 2023 to 2024 will promote the idea of um, inclusion and diversity. In this way, we as a community can celebrate together and as of today, missing school for Eid constitutes as a excused absence, but it doesn't eliminate the problem that we have of trying to make up homework and classwork. And that's why I think that we should get Eid off, uh, Eid recognized as a school holiday. Um, next year for 2024, it's, sorry, um, April 10th, but it goes by the lunar calendar, so every year it changes, but the calculate, you can look up the calculated day for each year. Do we have any other public comments that are in person? We have a couple of written public comments. Um, so we have a public comment from, sorry, it's just loading. Oh, and that's not loading. Oh. Oh. Mine says corrupted. Yeah, mine too. Maybe get out of split view. What? Yeah, that would be great, thanks. Does that sometimes I think this view. letter will go over three minutes, so I'll read. Um, I don't know if you can time me, Linda, thank you. Thanks, Nate. So the letters to the Gildan Central Board 
and superintendent of the Gilliland Central School District. Thank you for the opportunity to offer my thoughts on a matter you are attempting to address, namely the appointment and salary for assistant coaches for the indoor track team. Let me first offer some background. I had two children who graduated from Gilderland and ran for Gilderland on both the cross country and track indoor and outdoor teams. Both of them benefited tremendously from their involvement. My daughter was named captain and my son won an award, not so much for his success as a runner, but for his attitude and team spirit. I no longer live in the district, but I still support the teams and attend meets when I can. I have read the articles and editorials in the paper about funding for the assistant coaches for indoor track, and I have to assume it is an issue for the other running sports as well. And I see the precipitant for this crisis was 175 kids signing up to run indoor. This spurred a memory of a conversation I had with coach Dave Kozier over 10 years ago. He lamented to me at the time how he didn't know what he was going to do because 100 kids had signed up for indoor, far, ahead, far more than he had expected. Now 10 years later, and not only are there 100 kids interested, there are 175. And if there are not enough coaches, kids will have to be cut to assure the safety of the kids and that adequate coaching can occur for all various track and field sub events there are. I think without hesitation, the school district should find a way to fund coaches for these kids. There are many reasons I feel this way. First, think about it, 175 kids signing up to run. Most of these kids are not stars. They signed up to run in the halls of the schools or outdoors on the track in the cold and to get up on a Saturday morning early to face the cold and snow and ice to go to meet. Who does that willingly? Kids who want to. If those kids are cut, what will they do instead? Go home and play video games or spend time online or watch TV. They will most likely be alone until a parent gets home. Second, why track? What is it about track that motivates kids to join when there are other more glamorous sports to join? I would argue that it is because they know they won't get cut. They also talk to, um, they talk to hear, and see their peers who are involved. And what they see are kids who love running for Gilderland. Without a doubt, one of the most touching moments in my life was going to a cross country banquet and seeing kids crying. No, they were sobbing because they were saying goodbye to the program in their senior year. And where does that love come from? It is generated from the coaches who are so passionate about coaching these kids. The love exudes from the love exudes from the kids and their peers see it and feel it. And I would argue they want to experience it for themselves. And Gilderland running sports allow them the opportunity to do just that. Third, why would a kid take the time to make the effort to do something they likely never have before and are not likely to be all that successful at? No ribbons or medals for the majority. Well, you run against other schools, against other kids, and against yourself. PR is a term I had never heard until my kids joined. Personal record, you are getting better at what you were doing. Um, and the letter goes on, it'll be posted. Um, I think it's three pages. This is from James Pickett. Thank you, Nate. Let me pass this down. And we have another public comment. This is from Heather Murphy. She writes, to the Gilderland Central School Board and Superintendent of the Gilderland School District, I'm a parent of a seventh grader at Farnsworth Middle School, and I'm confused by the way the sudden closure of the school this morning was announced and communicated to parents. I understand that a mass email is a convenient way to communicate information to parents, but I believe you should have provided more ways to announce the closure and provide updates. My family only received emails. Other parents said they received a text, but we didn't. We also didn't receive an automated phone call, which I would have expected, similar to a snow emergency closure. As working professionals, we are not checking our incoming personal emails when working. A phone call from the school or district, as well as a voicemail, would more likely be checked and received during the day. If you have time tonight, please provide information about the policies and procedures and communicating emergency school closures while students are in class, especially in situations like these that are unpredictable. I'm also curious how this would have been handled if it had occurred in the elementary school in order to ensure someone was home to receive the student off the bus. Sincerely, Heather Murphy. And do we have any other public comments, Linda? No, okay. Um, so first, uh, thank you for uh, the public comment in person about the Eid holiday. I think we've talked about this at the DEI committee. And if I remember correctly, the last meeting, the research subcommittee in that, um, in that committee was going to look at 
uh, regionally, like how the school calendar is put together first by BOCES and maybe the processes of that. But I know the discussion is being had there. And so thank you for coming and in, in supporting that initiative. Um, the second public comment regarding, what was the track. second one? Thank you, track. I think we're gonna be addressing that later in this meeting. Is that correct, Dr. Wiles, with the personnel? Um, or Not in this meeting. Uh, we will be appointing win uh, winter coaching positions at our next board meeting. Okay, thank you. And then lastly, about the water main break this morning, and communications I forgot if I know this just happened this morning will you be talking about that at all I'm happy to address it right okay. now um, the parents right we don't know why we didn't get the phone call out so good point we've made a note of it because we do have emails texts and phone calls that we, we can do and so it's oversight on our part so our apologies for the community um, but I will take this opportunity to remind parents to look at the things, the ways they have um, when they've signed up for school messengers to make sure that they've opted in to all of those methods, emails, texts, and phone calls, um, because you do need to say that, that you want to receive all of those. Um, so it's a good reminder. And we've made a note of it, and um, we'll get it right next time. Okay, thank you. Um, next, I just want to follow up about a previous public comment about enrichment. I'll, res I'll reply in an email, but um, because we have the public um, hearing for the budget development uh, coming up, then I would strongly suggest, um, you know, if you're advocating for something to be addressed or within the budget, that you also speak um, at that uh, board meeting as well. If there are no more public comments, then we'll move on to the next end, next agenda item, which are the consent items. This includes the minutes of the October 11th meeting, the CPSE and CSE recommendations, personnel action, textbooks, and financials. Can I have a motion to approve the consent items? Katie, second, Nate. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Passes 9-0. Next, we have information items, curriculum and instruction. I'll turn it to Rachel. Good evening. Um, I have the pleasure this evening of recognizing some of our young musicians. <laughs> this year, 35 Gilderland High School students were selected to perform in the Area 2, um, excuse me, in the Area All-State Music Festival on number, November 18th and 19th at Saratoga Springs High School. These outstanding ensembles consist of students chosen from a nine county area, including Albany, Fulton, Hamilton, Montgomery, Rensselaer, Saratoga, Schenectady, Warren, and Washington counties. Competitive selection to these groups is based on the scores received by the students during the NISMA solo evaluation festivals the previous spring. Playing in the symphonic band will be Jeannie So on, on bassoon, Andrew Comparetta on trumpet, Ian Cotton also on trumpet, Anthony Guo on alto sax, Kathleen Guo on flute, Rainy Jin with flute, Franklin Kelly, snare drum, Nicholas Lynch, trombone, Olivia Petty, oboe, Carson Rittner, bass clarinet, Mason Smolin, trombone, Zexi Wang, bass clarinet, and Yan Su Sam Wu on trumpet. Playing in the orchestra will be Daniel Bian on violin, Olivia Covington, double bass, James Gong, violin, Jeannie Liu, violin, Natalie Teal, cello, and Young Su on cello. Singing in the chorus will be Maxine Alpart, alto, Leah Danahy, soprano, Genevieve Glunk, soprano, Cadence Graham, soprano, Kaylee Green, soprano, Rainy Jin, soprano, Bowden Kainal, tenor, Hazel Regan, alto, Abby Rudolph, alto, Ian Schaefer, bass, Savannah Skeeter, alto, Aiden Thomas, bass, Toby Weiss, tenor, and Liam Yurden, tenor. Chosen by audition to play in the jazz, jazz ensemble are Brendan Sow, trombone, and Landon Kynel, trumpet and coronet. The concert will, was, will be held on Saturday, November 19th, beginning at 2 p.m. at the Saratoga Springs High School Auditorium. And again, congratulations to all our young musicians, their families, and their music teachers. Dr. Wiles. All right, just one evening, uh, one item this evening. 
Um, November 1st, 2022 is a superintendent's conference day. There will be no school for all students that day. Um, we'll be offering a wide variety of professional development opportunities for all of our staff. Um, I'll just hit some of the highlights here. Um, progression Partners will be meeting with all staff in three separate 45-minute sessions to provide an overview of our equity audit work, which includes our equity institute training and our action planning around DEI. We just had um, our next training session with the equity teams this past Monday, so we'll have lots to report. Um, in addition, the high school will be doing some work around um, grading practices, but also exploring some strategies around um, having conversations around diversity, equity, and inclusion. The middle school has a menu of professional development programs that, from which staff can, can choose. They include topics on working with students in poverty, addressing burnout and improving well-being of adults, um, behavioral support strategies, creating equitable classroom cultures, supporting students experiencing trauma, and world language standards alignment, among others. Uh, in addition, there'll be training offered on de-escalation strategies and Promethean board use. Um, other topics offered include Stop the Bleed for our nurses and some other staff, uh, training for understanding, and uh, which also addresses some topics around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And lastly, at the elementary level, in addition to the progression partner overview, teachers will be working in grade level groups on the new science standards during the morning and then parent-teacher conferences are scheduled for the afternoon. So it's a very busy day with lots of different things going on. Dr. Wiles, is it possible for board members to just get a copy of the schedule of different buildings, and would we be able to pop in on anything that we I don't see why not. I have the Friday. schedules in front of me. We'll have to find a way to get them to them. us. Sure, we can share them. Okay. So it's next week. That would be great, yeah. Sure. Thank you. Next, um, action items. Uh, first, we have school business. Neil? service agreement with Northeast Parent and Child Society. Can I have a motion to approve the agreement with Northeast Parent and Child Society? Uh, Sandy Kelly, any questions or comments? All in favor? Okay. Passes 9 0. Next is a recommendation to approve the Education Service Agreement with St. Joseph's Addiction Treatment and Recovery Centers. Can I have a motion to approve the agreement with St. Joseph's? Uh, Gloria, second, Nate. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 9-0. Uh, next is a resolution to approve the agreement with Siena College to make available college and the high school courses for college credit during the 2022-2023 school year. Can I have a motion to approve the agreement with Siena College? Um, Katie, second, Blanca. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Passes 9-0. Uh, next is a resolution to approve the agreement with SUNY Albany to accept students for internship and practicum experience. Can I have a motion to approve the agreement with SUNY Albany? Gloria, second, Kelly. Any questions or comments? All in favor? You know what I'm saying? Okay, so passes 8-0 with one abstention. Recommended for approval is the establishment of the Gilderland Garden Club Scholarship Award. The graduating seniors receiving this award should have an 85 average or better, a financial need, and a demonstrated commitment to service either at the school or in the larger community. The students should also be accepted to a two or four year college and pursue study in horticulture, floriculture, landscape design, botany, plant pathology, conservation, forestry, agronomy, environmental studies, city planning, land management, wildlife science, or allied topics. Can I have a motion to approve the scholarship award? Judy, second Gloria. Any questions or comments? Just congrats to the business department for putting this together. Sounds awesome. All in favor? Aye. Passes 9-0. And then finally, we have some donations. First is a monetary donation to the Linwood Library in memory of Jean McCullough, and that was contributed by Margaret Laval, Ray Martinelli, Jean Perillo Roman, Fran Rockowitz, and Barbara Tucker. We also received the donation of a bell kit from Lisa McNeil. Can I have a motion to approve the donations? Nate, second, um, Katie. Any questions or comments? Just thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 
Aye. Passes 9-0. Thank you, Neil. Next, we have Superintendent Action, Dr. Wild. Thank you. I have two co-curricular clubs for Farnsworth Middle School. First is the Basketball Club, advised by Mr. Kenyon, and the second is the Scratch Club, advised by Ms. Eidings. Can I have a motion to approve the two co-curricular clubs? Uh, Nate, second Kim. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 9-0. Thank you, Dr. Wiles. Next, we have board president action. We took care of the first um, item on the agenda with the video conferencing, so we'll move down to letter B is a set of policy adoptions, A through I. Can I have a motion to approve these, um, this set of policies? Blanca, second, Judy. Any questions or comments? No. All in favor? It passes 9-0. Next, we'll move on to board committee reports. We'll start with uh, business practices. Uh, we met last week. We had a very informative meeting with Renee, I believe. Uh, and she spoke about um, trying to make changes to the school lunch program. Uh, and gave us a lot of information that I wasn't aware of that the ordering takes place in February for the next year um, and they try and accommodate what whatever they can um, and they are working on that but it was a very interesting very eye-opening and we also appreciate the parent who brought this uh, concern to us and then uh, we talked about school buses and they will uh, soon be having cameras attached so that they can uh, record license plates of people who pass stop school buses because this can be a very serious problem. Uh, the group that handles it takes care of all of the financing of this so there is no cost to the district and um, they, they prosecute as they see fit with, with the information that they have. And we didn't have enough people there to take votes on uh, officers for this year so I'm <laughs> reporting on what we had uh, and we do not have another meeting scheduled yet thank you Judy <laughs> next we have uh, communications yes we met on October 12th um, thank my fellow committee members for electing me chair again uh, and uh, we began the meeting by recognizing uh, Patrice who was a, a most uh, BOCES communication specialist and the whole communications team for their two recent awards from New York State's Public Relations Associ Schools Public Relations Association. Uh, Patrice pointed out uh, she thanked all of us, but she me she mentioned that this whole effort at communications is really a team project. So she wanted to also recognize her team, uh, Patrick and Sarah as well. Uh, second, we reviewed the exit poll results, which uh, from the the uh, budget vote. The committee reviewed the redacted exit poll res um, results from the May 22 budget vote and board elections. We noted three particular things. One, uh, look at we wanted to look at refining questions about children in the district for each of the voters. Our survey may not have provided sufficient answer choices to reflect all the voters who are responding. We might consider options to show relationships beyond parents, like to nieces and nephews and grandparents, so we might want to look at that as well as not having children in the school district, giving that as a choice. Uh, second thing we talked about was to explore what information we might uh, gain from this survey that might be meaningful to help the district make decisions. Uh, we might want to fine tune our questions and add some questions that are more targeted to specific decisions that we might be making that year. And thirdly, um, we talked about focusing our outreach and inclusion efforts on specific demographic groups. Uh, we had many responses from individuals, we, we had many responses from individuals from 31 to 50, but very few from younger voters. Uh, we might want to consider other ways to reach younger voters, so that's something we might uh, talk about. The committee also talked about voter turnout, and we did note that the turnout was less than typical in the Westmere catchment area. Uh, we asked Mr. Sanders, uh, for the next meeting, if there was a way to better understand who did or didn't come out to vote by looking at voter participation data. Uh, are there any patterns that can be discerned to help us target our outreach? 
And uh, at the next meeting, hopefully Mr. Sanders will have some brilliant remarks for us. <laughs> Uh, I know it's a very <laughs> challenging project. That's why we gave it to you. Uh, other ideas, uh, other ideas were considered to reach voters, including announcements at school events like concerts, plays, the international dinner, uh, etc. Uh, I did suggest that we consider hosting maybe some focus groups uh, to learn a bit more about what the barriers to voting might be, so, so we could help some people get uh, get to voting. And our last topic uh, was community engagement in the 23-24 budget process. Our committee reviewed the budget timeline that uh, Mr. Sanders shared at the board meeting, the last board meeting, uh, and we discussed the activities to get the community involved in the process. The first opportunity for public input is tonight, of course, uh, the board meeting, and after discussion, the committee agreed to send out a thought exchange. We changed the dates on that. Uh, originally, we had talked about doing it uh, sooner than tonight, but. We're going to talk about re rescheduling that. So we'll have a thought exchange out to the community so that people will have a, a nice window of time to reflect upon what, what some of the ideas they might have for us to consider for the next budget. Um, Dr. Wiles will also send, oh, that's the door. Oh, she'll also send a thought exchange to the board for our meeting in December. So we'll be participating in that again. That worked very well last year. Um, and Dr. Wiles will also be providing us on the board, a list of all the requests that are generated by the leadership team at stage two. For some reason last year, that got, kind of got left off, largely because we really didn't have much to go forward, only the one uh, item on the, um, the eighth grade. And then at our meeting, we added the library from Altamont, but basically we didn't have anything, so that kind of got left out and caused us a little bit of a blip later. So we're gonna get back to that. Um, and I just noted to the committee um, that we might want to think about or re refresh our memories about what uh, we do at, for public comment and how we handle public comment. I was particularly thinking about a couple meetings ago uh, when a number of people came to talk about the, the coaching for the track, which was an extremely uh, important issue. Um, but the way the, we, the board started to interact with the, um, the presenters. Uh, kind of goes against, well, it does go against the, the handbook that we've set up and the kind of processes we've set up. So we might want to revisit that and look at it. Uh, the handbook took about three years to come to, s to completion, plus we used a lot of the ideas that NISBA has generated and it has served us well in many, many, uh, you know, times. Uh, so we want to make sure that we kind of follow along that. So if, if people could just refresh their memory, uh, go back to the handbook and just look at that little piece. Uh, it does say the board president can respond if necessary under certain circumstances. For example, um, if the president wanted to correct a misstatement of fact or refer the speaker to a policy or suggest placing the item on a future agenda, those are proper things. Uh, but the, the president of the board should really be interacting and not all of us, <laughs> which I was mentioning it because I felt bad that I had violated it as well as many of us did, uh, kind of coming up with ideas without having the background information, which we should have been asking for, I think. So I was feeling kind of, I think we need to rethink this again or look at it uh, and maybe refresh our memories about how we want to proceed. Did you want to say something, Blanca? Um, can it be changed? Is that something we decide internally or is that? Well, it's something we put on the committee's list, but okay. I just wanted you but to know that this went through you know, three years of thought and, and mm -hmm. uh, we also used NISBA as a good, you know, kind of a, a rule mm -hmm. of yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't always agree with them. I don't know. I just. I know. I, I understand, yeah. but we need to have a discussion about it. Then I think Absolutely. that would be a good idea. I mean, I'm not on that committee, but I just want to point out, like, while the handbook, I think, is it shows good practices. I don't think it it's not stops a any right. right. It's not a rule. Or it's a not a law. law. <laughs> so I think that's what I was asking. Exactly. Right. So it's not. While the past practices have been, you generally don't respond because we don't have the whole story. Right. I don't think that would stop anybody from exactly responding. So I. Just, I, I, I'm just asking people to think about that again because if we maybe if we had raised our questions and then put it to Dr. Wiles and and, and Regan or to go ahead and get us answers, then we could have responded better, I think. But some of us were just mm -hmm. giving our opinion yeah. and mm -hmm. saying things that really we didn't have any background. So at the same time, I, I'm speaking for me. <laughs> right. At the same time, I see the benefit to. Folks come out, they give us their time, and, yep. and sometimes they sit here assuming that we're going to circle back. Well, that, that's why right. we need to be very so clear on what... I'd like to discuss it further. Absolutely. 
Okay. Uh, our next meeting is November 9th, and uh, on our agenda right now is community engagement on the budget and our voter turnout analysis for Westmere. Thank you, Gloria. Next, mm -hmm. a policy? Uh, yeah, we had, well, we had an emergency session last week so that we could get the, uh, uh, the uh, video conferencing meeting policy uh, cleaned up, which we passed tonight. Um, we don't have another one scheduled. Uh, one thing I will say is that there was some discussion about uh, getting some more student level involvement on some policy uh, development, and we're going to try to pursue that uh, actively going forward. Uh, we do not have a meeting scheduled. We're going to get scheduled this week. And next we have audit. Can Rebe Rebecca, Rebecca, can, can you, you update you? or no? I don't know if she can hear. Okay, I'll, I can give a brief update. So the last meeting we had the audit report that we accepted, um, and we have a audit meeting scheduled, I think it's for November 10th, 10th. Um, which happen. is a Thursday at 8 a.m. in the district office. And I think we'll be talking about what the uh, next items that we'll be looking at, what topics to look at to audit for this year's sec That's correct, Neil, right? Yep, okay. Rebecca, did you have anything to add? Sorry, I can't hear you. Um, no. <laughs> okay. Wait, can you hear me? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And last, uh, DEI. Did, did you want me to talk about that? Sure. Yeah, thank sure. you. Okay. Um, DEI met last week on the 19th. I think that was last week. Um, we heard um, updates from our four subcommittees. We got an update on DEI in action and an, up, uh, an update on the equity audit, which Dr. Wiles <coughs> had also mentioned um, regarding the upcoming professional development day. We discussed the first two chapters of our learning component, um, the book, A Place to Belong. We ended the meeting with a very a brief discussion regarding some upcoming issues related to the calendar, specifically um, looking at very briefly um, identifying Indigenous Peoples Day alone versus Indigenous Peoples versus Columbus Day, including additional religious holidays like our public comment speaker had mentioned on the upcoming calendar, and how to address athletic practices on religious holidays. This was a very abbreviated discussion um, due to time, so there will be more research and more discussion about these topics uh, in depth in the future, but I think um, I could speak on behalf of the committee that we would encourage parents, faculty, community members, and other stakeholders to reach out and share um, their feelings about these topics. Um, I don't have the next meeting date uh, written down in front of me, I'm sorry. Discussion on the, um, the incident that happened at the, the football game, I think two weeks ago at the DEI meeting. But um, I think it's scheduled, but we, I just don't have the date in front of me either. And those are all the committee reports. We'll go to public comment number two. Linda, is there another public comment? No other public comments? Okay. And then we'll go on to board issues, ideas, and sharing. Does anybody have anything to share or issues they want to raise? Oh, go ahead, Gloria. I, I know a few of us went over to the middle school this week. Uh, Senator Tonko, state senator, came to uh, Farnsworth and uh, Lisa Ball's students, uh, she had applied for a, um, a, a donation of books from the Library of Congress, which each congressman is entitled to, each congressional district, and um, she, they, we, they brought over some great kids' books for, uh, for Farnsworth, and then uh, Ms. Ball came with her students, and Mr. Tonko stayed the whole time and talked with the kids and answered questions, and it was really a really nice little event, so I'd like to Thank Mrs. Ball, thank all the students, uh, and, and uh, Ms. Senator Tonko, of course, and his staff for spending so much time with us. Representative Tonko. Representative, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, I got Senator on the hot. Yeah. <laughs> State Senate. Other, uh, go ahead, Blanca. Uh, it's more of a question. Um, Marie, I know you said that we're gonna dis discuss the second public comment at the next meeting. Are you able to provide any updates, or is it is it too premature? The second track. Yeah, the, track, track. the track coach. Oh, thank you. Um, so 
this past week? Or at the end of last week, um, DOT met with uh, Mr. Austin to look at ways we could fund some additional um, adults to support our students based on um, the existing amount of dollars we have set aside for coaches and we have found that we do have some potential to ha add at least one more coach. Um, there have been some new twists and turns uh, as of today, so we may be able to do a little bit more than that. Um, so I will have that information for you well before the next board meeting. But we are making good progress, so I can report that. Friday, um, great turnout. Uh, thanks again to the community as a whole uh, for voting for that that bond item or that that, that bond project. Um, it was great to see the community out there, the students out there, a lot of enthusiasm, and I, I am sure that that'll continue as we go forward in the future. It was also great just to see the field yeah. looking as good as it does. Um, that it, it really was quite an investment, and it turned out to be really very impressive to look at, and the kids played well on a new surface, so. Um, and they were able to play in the rain yesterday as well, which I think um, it would have been canceled otherwise, so that's good. Mm -hmm. Other board issues, ideas, and sharing? Oh, you, can, you, can, you can ask. Oh, go ahead, Morgan. Uh, I just want to congratulate the FMS PTA because they raised $4,000 with their craft fair this weekend, and that's uh, just wonderful. I know that they worked really hard on it. Um, I think they started in July with the planning, so kudos to them. Okay, so if there's no other board issues, ideas, and sharing, can I have a motion to adjourn? Judy, second, Blanca. All in favor? Aye. Uh, it passes 9-0. Thank you, everybody.